Aloha. Welcome to Hawaii is my mainland. This is Kaui Lucas. Today I have two guests that um, speak to something that has been a part of most of my life, uh, the hula. And um, two kumu hula and two generations of them. Um, we have Puanani Alama, who was in the for the very first monarch back in 1963, she was a judge. And, I'm, and her daughter, who is now, um, well, uh, Mama is still um, teaching hula and has her own halal here, but also baby Pua is carrying on the tradition and spreading it on the continent for us. So she, she is also a, a, a kumu hula, Pua Nani Yong. Yes. So, velida mai. Mahalo. <laughs> Welcome, and um, this is a special weekend. Yes, um, it sure is. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I haven't asked, um, it, you have your hoiki on Sunday mm -hmm. at McKinley School yes. Auditorium. Yes. And um, how, what anniversary hoiki is this? Do we know? You know, I can't even count. <laughs> I, I, I really, I, I stopped having my hoiki as of 1985, would you believe it? And um, then just last year, I, 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 uh, I resumed doing it uh, in honor of my sister Leilani to bring back her work. Um, she's in heaven, that I, I must tell you. And, and so after doing it, um, I decided, well, I'd better get back in the um, thing of doing it for myself now and show off my work <laughs> because I just love my work. It's part of me, and, and it'll always be part of me. So, so you and your sister were both have our kumu hula. Yes. Uh, for um, and and how did that happen? I mean, well, give us know, give us the decades. Well, Are we talking let, let, back let me in the forties? Uh, yes. In fact, when I was a little little girl, um, um, you know, we never paid for our hula lessons. We were. Uh, you, you have to be chosen. It's, it's not just everybody. Just, just say, okay, I want to go to Hula now, and you just go to Hula and pay somebody like they do now. We didn't have, uh, the, there was, we, we didn't have very many privileged children, Miss Lucas. So you see, uh, under those circumstances, if you were not chosen, you do not dance or the Hula. Wow. And so I was very blessed by having many people um, offering me my hula. And, you know, up until, this, uh, up until this day, I still feel very blessed because I see a lot of people don't know what they want out of life. And from the time I can remember, I always said to my parents, I'm going to be a hula teacher. Did your mother dance hula? No, mom didn't dance the hula. She sang for us, but she never danced the hula. Dad danced the hula, though. He, okay. he was real good. <laughs> <laughs> he was real good. <laughs> and you grew up in Honolulu? I grew up here in Honolulu, yes. And, um, and you were just telling us that actually in this very building, uh, the Pioneer oh, Plaza you, you downtown, to where the stadium is. <laughs> then my first hula studio, I opened my hula studio here in 1954 after I left my former um, place of teaching. And um, it was available because the Gaspro company moved to Bishop Street. And so it was available. So I took over their, their very top floor. and. Um, there I started my hula business in 1954. And you were dancing, you had been dancing for quite a while, obviously, by that time. And oh, yes. Was, was there a formal uniki process? Maybe some people don't know, but oh, that yes, uniki yes, is the yes, graduation yes, to, it's to a gr become a hula. Right, right. Yes, we, I, I think I had one, two, maybe three of them, three hula graduations. And yes, you know, I also like to select. I don't like them to think, okay, I've been at Hula, say, about four or five years. I'm ready for it. Uh-uh. I call the shot if they're ready or they're not ready. And um, out of my, uh, my Hula graduation, I just handpicked maybe three or four to graduate from Hula. It's not the whole class. 
uh, of course, in our days, they would say, you know, you're, you're kind of being a little too fussy. So that, that just don't do anymore. So, but at my time, you know, they all know the, the, the way it should be done, which was the way I did it. I, you choose who you think will be a very good teacher. And then that's, you know, that's how you unique them. But of course, there's many people involved. You know, you can't just, uh, like anything else, right? It has to be a whole slew of people to make it very um, comfortable. And um, like anything else, it's part of business, you know? Because um, you have to pay for a place of where we're going to have it and blah, blah, and blah, blah, you know? So it hasn't stopped yet. So in the in the mid fifties in 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 Waikiki, uh, I, I'm saying Waikiki, although you said your studio was downtown. Yeah. I, I was thinking of the, um, the the pictures of you and and, and the um, Hula uh, Historic Preservation Society has compiled some beautiful pictures oh, of you. you, and um, uh, let's let's see some of those, and perhaps you can can tell yes. us what's the uh, this uh, here is at the new Malu Hotel, where now it's um, the Hilton Hawaiian Village. I danced there for many years with uh, George Naopi. Now, this is a hula graduation, I think this is. But it wasn't mine. This is my sister's. Uh, this is at the Alawai uh, Clubhouse on Makali um, uh, and uh, Makali. Uh, what's yeah. the name of that street? Yes. Uh, Kapiolani. Kapiolani Boulevard, right. It used to be a right across of the, um, oh, I can't remember that organization. And this here is at the New Malu. Uh-huh, this picture here. So... Uh, I was a featured dancer there at the New Malu Hotel. And this, um, now we're jumping into a whole, uh, another generation. This is baby Fua's hello. Perhaps you can you can just jump in here and talk about your your hello and yeah. So um, I currently teach in Southern California in Mission Viejo, actually, officially Laguna Hills, California. And uh, this is my 19th year. This year is my 19th year, and so next year will be my 20th anniversary. So um, as a as a Kumu now, you know, knowing my mom's history with Mary Monarch, it was always kind of a goal for me to be able to take my halal to the stage of my mother to kind of bring things full circle so yeah. hopefully make mama proud that you know something she helped form and create and and was a part of from the beginning could um, come full circle to see her lineage represented on stage and so in 2014 we I was able to was invited was able to take my group 2014 and 2015 to the Mary Monarch. Well, um, since we're on the subject of, of Mary Monarch, I mean, that is that is an incredibly rigorous, um, I'm not going to call it an ordeal, honor. Yes. Um, lots of practice, lots yes. of lots of detail, lots of yes. history. So, um, and coming from uh, California, I mean, how does that work? Where do you get your materials? How do you do your, I mean, how does that all work? Yeah, it's, it was a big learning curve. Um, it, it was, um, you know, we started off, there are a few competitions um, in California uh, that we participated in. Um, it was first with Ehula Mau, um, and then there's also Yaoya Kala up in Northern California. And now we also participate in a competition, Kumukahi, which is in Las Vegas. And so starting off, you know, competing on the mainland, of course, was a great big help, stepping stone to learn a lot of things. Because my mom uh, never competed. So the competition aspect of it was a big learning process for me. But I was very blessed. I have a lot of good mentors. I have a lot of good hula friends and hula other hula teachers that are a great support to me in addition to mama and my aunt. As far as the competition circle goes, I was very blessed to be have a lot of people to learn from and so but you know um, yeah Mary Monarch is such a much bigger event because your travel just the logistics alone is exhausting <laughs> not not you know needless to say all the preparations the flower I mean it's a lot of coordination and like I say I'm very blessed um, you know having 
having mama behind me and uh, being born here, I, I did have a lot of people who were willing to lend a hand, which I couldn't have done without, you know, so a lot of good guidance. So um, let's let's talk about when I went to visit um, your mom in, in her studio, her yes. presence studio in Kaimaki, yes. <laughs> which, which was really fun. It was very, it was like this warm memory just to the be art up. gallery. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> They're my grandchildren, <laughs> I love dearly. No fun making up their tutu, please. And that's, <laughs> I can't help it. Don't, Don't get her started. The yeah. show will last two hours until she starts talking will. about it them. It will, will. It really will. So, so she said that you actually have an engineering background. I do. I so. do. How did that work? Well, <laughs> you know, mama being mom and with her generation, you know, um, I, um, Everyone, I mean, I knew hula was always in me, and my grandmother and my every, my whole family knew that. But it was always um, go to school, get your degree, and then you can do whatever you want. So that was always a restriction for me. You know, okay, you want to do hula, that's fine, but you go get your diploma because in Mama's generation, you know, um, with the huge Western influence, um, being able to be educated was a very very important to them. So that was important, and so I had to get my diploma, and I worked as a construction engineer for about seven years. And after I had my first son in 1997, then I told my mom, okay, I did what you asked. So what do you think? <laughs> so at that point, it was like, yeah, you're ready. I mean, yeah, she's been preparing me for it, and it was just when the right timing was. So in 1997, I left my job and raised my son and opened my halal. And now you, there is another generation. We have pictures of yes. three generations <laughs> of you gorgeous My women. twins. <laughs> yes, my twins are born in 1999 and they're 17 now. And, and uh, they are, um, yeah, the next generation. So this weekend, are, are they here too? Will they are they? here too. We are here too. Um, so we've come down and we will be making a cameo at the show <laughs> so we'll be part but I'm here to help mom to support her and her in her whole EK and um, we're excited to be here well we're gonna take a little break now and then come back and talk some more about lovely hula hands okay thank you my name is Calvin Griffin host of military in Hawaii which airs here on think tech Hawaii every Friday at 11 a.m. Please join us. We'll be talking about issues concerning our military, veterans community, and other related issues that concern all of us. Aloha. You can join the Hawaii Farmer Series every Thursday from 4 to 5 on ThinkTech. And I'm your co-host, Matthew Johnson, here with Justine Espirito. And we are so thankful to have this show to use as a forum to get to know all the movers and shakers in agriculture in Hawaii and hear kind of their background in history as well as uh, their perspective on what they're doing and also the future for agriculture in Hawaii. So join us every Thursday. You can tweet in your own comments and suggestions and be a part of the conversation at Think Tech High and we hope to see you every single Thursday. Welcome back to Hawaii is my mainland. I'm Kaui Lucas and with me today are uh, two of three generations of this family now dancing hula in the most beautiful way. The, uh, the matriarch here, Puanani uh, Alama and her daughter Puanani Yung, who is a Kumu hula currently in, in California. So it, the, the idea of, I mean, hula is off as, as lots of people know, is incredibly popular in Japan, for instance, and and then and then you mentioned there there are competitions in in California, and I, I I wonder, can you talk about what what I mean when I do hula here? I mean, it's you look outside and you smell the flowers and you hear mm -hmm. the ocean, and but I, I I don't know what it's like to 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 to, to do it somewhere else. Can you? Is, is it different or is it Yeah, the same? well, yes and no. Um, I get actually get that question a lot, especially um, competing and having the girls having to, you know, embrace the melee and how do I get them to really feel 
what the Mele is about if they've never seen the place or been to the place. And all I can describe is um, when it comes to that, um, we have to reach for things that, that people can take reference to. So if a, mele, if a Mele has a certain feeling or it's bringing the composer a certain feeling, even though they haven't been to that place, I try to get them to somehow capture that feeling with something that they can, they can associate with. So maybe we don't have the, uh, you know, the same types of waves or winds that they do, you know, down in Waikiki. But we can kind of try to explore where we where we are and what is similar, and so how we feel about those things where we're from. So in in that sense, it is a, a little bit um, different for the students because I think that yeah, they don't get that touchy feely type of experiences. Um, but on the other hand, you know. They love hula so much, and, and, and when, my mom's, when my mom's taught me, you know, you love your hula in here. And so that part's not different. You know, that part's not different. My students love it so much, and they, to some extent, you know, um, soak it up with such vigor because they don't have what we have here. And so um, to that extent, no, hula's not different because they have that same aloha for it. But yes, the physical part, not seeing the, the exact mountains and what they look like. And sure, that part is a little bit. And, and also, you know, um, the lifestyle, you know, just the lifestyle, embracing the lifestyle, having to, that, um, that there's nothing that you can, uh, uh, what can I say? The island lifestyle and the island people. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's nothing you can do to replace that, honestly. But they love their hula. They do love their hula. So who, who, who are your students? I have uh, probably 50-50. I have 50% of my students are either displaced Hawaiians or their families are displaced Hawaiians and now sending their kids to me. And the other half are just people from every walk of life that love the islands and love hula and want to learn more about the culture and love the dance and just want to learn. And um, poor Nani, yes. who are your students? Who are my? They all come Ainas. They're all people from Hawaii here. Yes, they're my students. And so now, yes, how many generations? Oh, yes. Well, um, families and yeah, lots of lots of families. You know, their mom came to take Kula, and then their ch her children, and now their children's children takes lessons. Oh, so you have your your dad's have, like grandchildren. Three, yeah. Wow. Wow. Well, yeah. Wow. Th that's fun. Yeah. Yeah. But now I've stopped teaching the children um, because as you get older, you get you get a little bit more. You don't have that type of patience. You, you need to be a good teacher with the children. It's like a game playing that you play with the children first. They must like you to be able to. My time now, you just go because you have to go. <laughs> now you have, the children must like you before they, they, they'll show their stuff to you, you know. So Plus it's, mom's it's, with me. Hmm? Plus you're with me a lot. Yeah, and I, I go up because I want to be with my grandchildren. I want them to know they have so. a tutu. So do you teach uh, when you're in California also? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow, yeah. how fabulous. Yeah, no, my students are so blessed. In fact, um, I think sometimes um, my students get a little bit more of her attention than they do here. <laughs> you don't want to tell them that, do you? <laughs> so if, if there's a, a trademark alama kula, what, what would that be? A trademark. Or, 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 uh, or it, gesture or way of dancing. I mean, you know, it's sort of every uh, It's can... a little subtle. My work is subtle. And I like to express every um, wording of it. I just don't like to just stay and just say the, the moon, just the moon. I just, the moon moves. I like that kind of a thing. I like my gestures to be very... Um, um, how do you explain that? Very specific uh, or very... Yeah, well, they are, but yeah. I like a, a lot of gestures in it. I think it's, because it means so much to me, because I see it, see it in so many ways, you know, that uh, instead of just saying, okay, here's the moon, straight up front, 
here's the moon. No, here's the moon there. The moon moves about, you know. I like that kind of a thing. That makes it feel real good. <laughs> and uh, for, for, for music, um, do you have a, a, a favorite uh, composer or favorite well, Millie that you, you would say uh, was you know, kind all of a my, All the hula songs I love. I don't have a, a favorite. Every song I love. But my, my favorite singer, not because I worked for him, was Bill Ali Ilo Lincoln. He was my very favorite singer. Today, I have another favorite singer, but he's going to get real angry with me if I mention his name. Oh, okay. Why? Yeah. If he's that good, we all want to know. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's very good. Not that good. He's very good. And I think he knows who he is, so I'm not going <laughs> to mention his name, so he don't get will, with me. <laughs> will he be Will he be playing music on Sunday at the Hoike? Um, no, he's going to come though. I think he's going. He had better come, or or I'm going to get go out with my puile and whack him. <laughs> but good. If Uncle, he's not there. Uncle Kimo, and, Uncle Kimo Alama, and his group will be uh, performing with Mama. Okay, and they're related somehow, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. So how is, how is he related? Oh, he's my favorite. <laughs> That's, how's that? He's my favorite. Punahele. He's my Punahele. All right. <laughs> so again, let's just um, refresh that it's, it's going to be at the McKinley Auditorium this coming Sunday, which is the 8th? No, the 9th. Uh, sorry, 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 sorry. The 9th of the April. The 9th. And um, the the timing would, would um, so um, the tickets are thirty tickets are thirty dollars and it is um, from two two to four mm -hmm. and doors will open at one fifteen and it's open seating open seating and and McKinley doesn't charge for parking you just might have to walk a little bit yeah yeah that's it's and there should be tickets at the door there should be tickets mm -hmm. at the door that's a wonderful um, historic. Um, come early because they have a great gallery in, at uh, McKinley because it's over 100 years yeah. old of, of And of Mama the graduated from there. Oh, 1948. Okay. So. <laughs> 1948. <laughs> and my sister also, 1943. Okay. Uh -huh. And um, that's, uh, that may just makes it all even more right. wonderful exactly. and special. Exactly. Yeah. I'm, I'm so looking forward to it because Thank it you. is that that um, that real um, hula yeah. feeling. Yeah, and you can just uh, kind of I have not uh, done much uh, as I grew older. I have the musicians sing the songs, and whatever happens, I let the, let other people do it for the girls. This time, I'm working with the girls. I'm going to sing their songs. I'm going to chant for them. So, if they want to see how it was done, come and see it. Yeah, uh, they'll be this. So this could be quite interesting, <laughs> and I'm just praying that I live up to the my to their expectations, <laughs> not mine. <laughs> yeah. So, how often do you do you come back to Hawaii? Um, I try to make it back a couple times a year, you know, just to reconnect mm -hmm. with um, not just mom and bring the kids home, so that they still have that connection to home even though they were born and raised in the mainland that they still have their connection to their family and and their Hawaiian roots and are there are there particular things you do to um, sort of foster that um, for for your students who, who don't come back to Hawaii do you um, have kind um, any kind of rituals I mean, I mean in the broader sense it might be a potluck somewhere or yeah but, no or, actually I think just you know I feel like just that the halal is there, you know. The halal really has become a second family um, to all my students, whether they're, you know, um, have local roots or not. Um, and just the fact that I'm there and they have this extended halal family, to me really is just the essence of being able to, to feel that spirit of hula and aloha because um, some of them thought they'd come in and take a couple months and they just whatever, but once they, they get connected and they feel this warmth that they don't have elsewhere, then, you know, they're, it's part of them. Um, uh, we got a, um, a short video I'd, I'd like to, to see, and we can keep talking because it doesn't have music with it, mm -hmm. but um, it shows uh, pictures, historic pictures of you um, 
that the um, Hula Preservation Society put together, and oh, um, okay. I'm. Forty-nine. Okay. So you have seen many changes. Oh, a lot of changes. A lot of changes. <clears throat> yes. Was that? Uh, what that was, was that? At the new Malu too. The new Malu. Uh -huh. Okay. And now I was advertising raw beer. <laughs> and my mom's not a drinker. I'm not. A drinker. <laughs> I don't drink. Neither do I smoke. <laughs> and I didn't just stop. This is at the Royal Hawaiian Hotel. So you also danced at the Royal Hawaiian? I danced oh. and I taught there. I taught there from 1948 till 1956. This is at the Royal Hawaiian Hotel. Oh, and that's a, and that's a, 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 a cellophane. cellophane skirt. I have to say, I always wanted to do. This. <laughs> <laughs> and then, okay. You know, for like the last, for the last 15 years, it's been very uncellophane. <laughs> yes. I, I feel like we've gone as a, 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 authentic as we can go, right? When you grow your own rake and you pound your yes. own <laughs> papa and you make your own um, pa'u. And so who knows? There might be a resurgence. <laughs> but I'm not, not sure. Mary, not at Mary Monarch. No. <laughs> Just for fun. Just for fun. That's Just right. For fun. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So in the, in the, in the last minute, um, um, just say something about um, what hula has meant to me uh, as, as a life. For me, it's it's, as a life. it's my life, right? Uh, and it's something where I find it has helped me in many ways. Um, made me very independent, a very independent woman. Um, I taught it since I was knee high. Um, I didn't go to college. My high school was my last. Was at at McKinley High School, where my hula uh, hoiki is going to be held. Um, it's given me um, a lot of um, a lot of love in my heart. Oh. Really, it has. Thank it's given you. me a lot of love in my heart. And it brings me want to do a lot of things with the people. You know, at, at one time it was so difficult for me because I was always so busy. I danced at the, in the night, I taught during the day. I mean, it was just, a, a, my lifestyle was so different. But so, now as I grew older, I have the time. Okay, and we can all come and see you in action with your, your whole family and your halals um, Sunday, March 9th. 2 p.m. at the family. April. April. <laughs> April. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Well done. Oh. Good.